Okay, this chapter will be a long chapter. So we will go to a demand function. <coughs> so we look at the demand function of one good. First, we will take a look of the Marshallian demand function. Second, we will take a look of the change in the income. What is the effect? Third, we will take a look of the effect of change in price. Fourth, we will look at the demand curves. Fifth, we will take at the special demand curve called Hexian demand functions. Next, we will take a look of the price changes with the mathematical perspectives. So finally, we will take a look of the demand elasticity, consumer surplus, and the review preference. So this is another axiom in the economics developed by uh, Paul Samuelson. Okay, let's get started. First is the Marshallian demand functions. So in your uh, uh, high school, secondary school, or uh, elementary, undergrad, the demand function you come across is usually this Marshallian demand function. Marshallian demand function is the function is a demand function that x one, x two up to x n are the function of p one, p two up to p n and i. Okay, so basically the demand function is on price, cross price, and the income. So one of the properties that in Marshallian demand function, this is homogeneous to degree zero. So it means that the demand function as a function of P1, P2, or all the own price and cross price and I. So this, if you multiply the P1, P2 up to Pn and income by T, this is exactly equal to T raised to the power zero times the Xi. Okay, so this is this means demand functions. A Schilling demand function is homogeneous to degree zero. So next we will use the indifference curve diagram to show the change in income and change in price. First is the change in income. So it is very usual to think that okay when income increase you will buy more goods. Say okay so how to represent in the indifference curve diagram? So if income increase. So you have a new i, and the price is constant. Okay, so you can draw a higher utility level. Then the new intersection points will be the new optimal consumption x. Okay. So here you can see that when income increase, I buy more good x and y. But in some case, when your income increase, you will buy less of it. So take the potatoes for an example, or rice. Okay, when you get richer, you won't eat rice. You eat pasta, pizza, right? Then in this case, when income increase, so X is the goods that you will reduce consumption when your income increase. So it is possible that the utility. The indifference curve is here. Okay, then the optimal value of x decrease. So we have different jargon for first type and second type of goods. For the first type of good x, we call this normal good. And for the second type, we call this inferior goods. Okay, for normal goods, when income increase, you will buy more. For inferior goods, when income increase, you buy less. Mathematically, this is round x, round i. This is positive. In V, I mean rang X, rang I negative. So in two good case, at most you can you can you can only have one in V goods. You cannot have both. Okay. So this is the effect of change in income. Next is the effect in change in price. Okay. So change in price is much more difficult. So say if they increase in price X. Okay. So it you draw the new. Project line, it will be something like this. But usually, we will separate the total price effect, okay, total price effect by the substitution effect, and income effect, okay. So we will shift this new budget line up and touching the original in different in different curve. Okay, the reason why we want to 
parallel shift of the budget line is that okay, we want to separate the price effect. So the x1, x2, this is the change in the x given, only change in the relative price of x and y. Okay, so this dotted line captured the change in the relative price. When price of x increased, that means good y are cheaper in relative term. So in a same indifference curve, same utility level, I just rotate like this, okay, keeping the same utility level. After that, okay, so when the price of x increase, you can draw a new indifference curve. So this is x3, okay, so from x1 go to x2, we call this substitution effect. Substitution effect means that the change in the price in the effect of the combination of good x and y, keeping the utility constant. Okay. While x2 to x3 is what we call the income effect. Right? We just learn what is the meaning of change in income. <coughs> so here, parallel shift means the income decrease. So if the good x is more expensive, you will feel that you are poor right so because your income is actually lower so this is the way to digest the price effect into substitution effect and income effect so similarly if the px decrease first you can draw a new budget line then parallel parallel shift inward and touching the original indifference curve from x1 to x2 this is the substitution effect and x2 to x3, this is the income effect. Okay. <clears throat> well, the direction of change in x may not be so obvious. Okay. So this shows that when price of x increase, you buy less. Here, when price of x decrease, you buy more. But it may not be true. So let's take a look of some special case. First, what if this is inferior? Inferior means rang x rang i is negative okay <coughs> so say now the price of good x decrease okay so you do the same things but first take care of the substitution effect so the substitution effect is always negative okay x1 will change the x2 in fee goods means that when income increase you buy less okay so this is the old income level when the goods is cheaper you in fact you feel that you are richer okay so your income increase from this dotted line to this green line but you need to make sure that since this is inferior the new optimal point should be this region okay at the left hand side of the x2 so the indifference curve may be like this Okay, so the optimal x still x3 is higher than x1. Okay, so if this is inferior goods, when the price of good x is lower, you still buy more. But there is a fair it's a special case called given goods. Okay, given paradox. We call it given goods. So given goods is the goods that rang x rang p x is positive. That means when the price increase, we buy more. When the price decrease, we buy less. Okay. So how to show in the indifference curve analysis? Again, assume P X decrease. So we are doing the same things. Okay. New budget line. Shifting inward. X one to X two. This is the substitution effect. But at the end, okay, you may resort to buying less of the good X if this is a given goods then the indifference curve okay should be some point at the left of the original consumption so here x3 as you can see that the income effect x2 to x3 is very much okay la the negative income effect is greater than the substitution effect in this case given paradox will be resulted so this shows when px increase optimal consumption of x will also increase 
when px decreases, optimal consumption of x also decreases. Okay, so given goods is invented by the English economists given in the past. But uh, in reality, we seldom see this happen. Uh, 